The next item of business today is the Member's Business Debate on Motion Number 12297 in the name of George Adam on Fair Trade Fortnight 2015. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now, please. I call on George Adam to open the debate around seven minutes. Mr Adam. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, once again, it is with great pride that I lead uh, this debate during Fair Trade Fortnight and uh, sum up some of the work that we have done within the cross-party group on Fair Trade, which uh, I co-chair with uh, James Kelly as well. And uh, we said last year during this debate that you know, Scotland becoming a fair trade nation two years ago wasn't a destination, it wasn't the end. It was the start of the process you know, for our counties, our communities, our towns, who all became part of fair trade towns and counties. This wasn't the end, it was only the beginning, because there is so much more which we can actually do, presiding officer, and there's so much that is the work that still needs to be done. You know, the fair trade premium provides the opportunity for education, fair pay and uh, opportunities for families and communities throughout the world. And some of this has already been explained to us at the various events we've had this year. The cross-party group in fair trade have met with and discussed many issues regarding fair trade in the past year. Issues recently, like the recently launched Bala Sports Goods. Now, you may not be aware, but Bala Sports Goods produce uh, footballs and rugby balls uh, in Pakistan, along where a lot of large manufacturers do as well. Now, many of you will be aware of my love of our national game and my support for St Murn Football Club. But I believe there's still so much that we can do in sport, and I think sport is a perfect example of giving it a, an access for young people and everyone else to get involved in the fair trade movement with sports kits, sports equipment, all being produced in countries that would benefit from the fair trade premium. This year we met with Bala, and Bala explained to us what their name actually means. In Spanish, it means bullet. In Punjabi, it means strength. And in, Ga in Gaelic, it means ball. Now, I'd assume that in Punjabi, the strength means that working together we can make a difference. The Spanish bullet would come from the skillful feet of a Spanish player, obviously not a Scottish one. And in Scotland, we just call a ball a ball. It's our way and it's our lot in life. But Bala are a, a brand new cooperative organisation who set up uh, to expand the availability and use of ethical produced fair trade sports balls. Uh, in Pakistan, about 70% of the world's hand-stitched balls are made there. And Bala are part of, there's an estimated 40,000 workers involved as well. So their whole idea is to make sure that we can, at every level in Scotland, uh, assure that they can get these type of sports equipments there. They have uh, equipment that's actually FIFA approved. And I think one of the most important things that we should look at is to make sure that we can encourage our football clubs, whether it be uh, amateur, junior or professional, to take up uh, the idea of using some of these balls as well, which can be difficult because we are all aware that the SPFL will have uh, sponsorship deals already. But we have to look at what is ethically the correct thing to do. And if we are truly a fair trade nation, we have to look at how we do these things as well. Now, BAL are also uh, looking for a... They've got a share offer available at the moment. They're looking for a funding target to actually be able to uh, mainstream their equipment in sports and recreation throughout Scotland and uh, their targets for £150,000 and a share investment can be as little as £50 with a maximum per individual of 25 and a minimum age of a shareholder can be 11 years old. So this is a perfect example of how we can make fair trade relevant to young people and uh, pe uh, people throughout Scotland as well. But some of the things that we've heard over the years, there are some very difficult stories and there's still a lot of work still to be done. Last night I hosted an event uh, for the Scottish Fair Trade Foundation that was attended by the Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop and visitors from nations of uh, different stages in fair trade development. One of these individuals was Pamela Intelligent from Mauritius and she's a 44-year-old woman who's worked in manufacturing since her early teens. She started at the age of 13 uh, and worked for three to four years where she started as a helper before being trained as a sewing machine and started as a machinist. Now, her problem was that some of the equipment that was used, some of the processes that were used, were making it very difficult for her, her health. Uh, so the fair trade fee premium for her was to ensure that she worked in an ethical uh, environment and there was actually protective equipment for her to use as well. And uh, she worked with uh, Craft Aid. 
uh, who actually are a non-profit uh, making organisation dedicated to the welfare of disabled people. The company was established in 1982 and their main objective is to provide paid employment for disabled and rehabilitate them uh, for, for society. Now, fair trade cotton is one of the things that's a very big issue as well. And since 2005, fair trade cotton has been made available in the UK. Cotton products licensed as fair trade are on sale in the high street and online, but less than 1% of cotton products in the UK carry the fair trade cotton mark. So the potential for growth of fair trade cotton is uh, considerable. And when you meet people like Pamela, you understand that how much of a difference it makes to their lives the fair trade premium does. We also met Charles Sh Chave, who is employed by the Cath uh, Kasathula Cane Growers Association uh, in Malawi. Now, he's worked with them for seven years and he's a trust administrator, ensuring that uh, all the fair trade, uh, uh, everything's adhered to with the fair trade side of things in the business. And he explained to us how much of a difference it can make in their communities in making sure that access to education, making sure that young people are getting that opportunity to do something different and increasing literacy levels in low poverty areas is making a difference in their lives. Only when you hear these stories do you know that there, there is a difference, uh, the, the difference that fair trade can make. But we also had some visitors from Palestine and uh, Tazir and Mohammed told us they are just farmers. They are not politicians. They have to deal with the fair trade, uh, getting their product abroad as well. But they have other issues that they have to deal with as well that are not of their making. And I think that explained to me that with the difference that fair trade made, they were just farmers. They were not politicians. So, presiding officer, Scotland and uh, our commitment continue on this journey with fair trade, creating the type of world we all want to live in. And in the fair world and one for, of opportunity, there are many challenges, but but together we can work towards that future, not just because it's right, not because it's the right thing to do, but also because we want to do, do ourselves an injustice and that of future generations by not giving this a try and making this opportunity. Nelson Mandela said, Overcoming poverty is not a gesture of charity, it is an act of justice. And in closing, presiding officer, I would say, let's welcome, let's remember the words of Nelson Mandela and see what we can do to make the world a better place. Many thanks. We now turn to the open debate and its speeches of around four minutes, please. And I call on Patricia Ferguson to be followed by Gordon MacDonald. Thank you, presiding officer. And may I congratulate George Adams for securing this evening's debate and for hosting the reception that we all enjoyed so much last night, um, particularly on this issue, which is one where there is such consensus across the chamber. And if we ever needed evidence of the fragility of farms and farming in the developing world, we only need to look at the situation in Malawi following the recent devastating flooding that occurred there. Many farmers lost their homes and are struggling to bring their land back into use. And with the planting season almost over, these farmers face a precarious future, not knowing if they will be able to plant crops this year or if those crops, if planted, will flourish. That, however, is the risk for farmers throughout the developing world, and it makes the fair trade premium even more important to them. And our support for the principle of fair trade, absolutely vital. Now, it's two years since we became a fair trade nation, but that didn't happen overnight, nor should it have done. And it was due to the work and commitment of volunteers over the years that led churches, schools, universities, towns, cities and workplaces being recognised as supporters of fair trade and taking the issue forward. Now, I must admit that when I first suggested the idea of Scotland becoming a fair trade nation to the then First Minister Jack McConnell in 2005, I had some doubts as to whether it was a realistic proposition. But by the time the Fair Trade Forum was launched with Scottish executive funding in 2007, I was sure that we could collectively do it. But the experience of farmers in Malawi tells us we can't rest on our laurels. And I'm glad, indeed delighted, that the current Scottish Government has committed itself to the cause over the years of its time in office and has continued that funding. Over the years, the number of items carrying the Fair Trade logo has increased significantly, and it's now commonplace to find florists offering Fair Trade roses and other flowers, and even jewellers selling items crafted from fairly traded gold. 
In the Fair Trade debate in 2014, I informed the Chamber of the Malawi Rice Challenge launched by the Lord Provost of Glasgow. This project operated on the basis that for every 90 kilos of rice sold, a rice farmer in Malawi would be able to send their child to secondary school for a year. And I reported too that the target set by the Lord Provost was to sell enough rice to send 12 young people to school. Due to the generosity of the staff and members of the City Council and the Alios, I can advise colleagues that not 12, but 24 children in Malawi were able to be supported through school. A real achievement. This year, Glasgow City Council is continuing its promotion of Malawi rice, but it's now going further. The City Council is going to focus on fair trade footballs, and George Adams has quite rightly drawn Bala to our attention, and is combining its promotion of fair trade and healthy living and the continuing legacy of the Commonwealth Games. As we've heard, the footballs in question made by Bala are hand-stitched in factories in Pakistan and are made to FIFA international standards. No child labour is involved and the fair trade credentials are certified by a third party. Unfortunately, I understand that the SFA is already engaged in a commercial deal that means it can't currently use BALA, but hopefully it might do in the future. The City Council will purchase and has purchased 100 of these footballs, which are branded with the logos of fair trade, the Commonwealth Games legacy, and Glasgow's 2015 Green Year. The balls will be used at sporting events across the city, many of them in schools, and will also be used in the Glasgow Malawi Cup to be held in June. And members, as I've said, who attended the reception last night will have seen the footballs and the rugby balls on display. And a supply of non-branded balls will also be available for purchase, and I should say that they are very competitively priced. Um, the footballs have been sourced from Bala that George uh, Adams spoke about, and that's a cooperative organisation which has had start-up assistance from the Council's Cooperative Glasgow Development Fund and was officially launched at Ham Hamden Stadium last week. Presiding officer, last year I suggested that the Parliament shop needed to consider whether it should do more to promote fair trade, and I'm very pleased to be able to note that the situation has improved. New fair trade chocolate has been commissioned, as have some other interesting items, but I do think that we still could go a little bit further. Presiding officer, I'd like to once again thank George Adam for uh, organising the debate uh, today and look forward to supporting fair trade for many years to come. Many thanks. And I now call Gordon MacDonald to be followed by Annabel Goldie. Thank you, presiding officer. And can I also take this opportunity to thank my colleague, George Adam in securing this debate. And in my constituency, there are a number of communities, schools and churches that have achieved fair trade status. And I'd like to take this opportunity to highlight a number of those achieving that fair trade status. Like Stenhouse Primary School, who achieved fair trade status in 2010. Since the formation of the school's fair trade committee, they have introduced healthy fair trade snacks to their tuck shop introduced fair trade tea and coffee at the staff room, organised fair trade coffee mornings and produced awareness raising posters in and around the school. Then there's Juniper Green Community Council, who recently received a certificate of appreciation from the One World Shop in acknowledgement of the sales of fair trade products at their monthly community market. The market on Saturday had the local primary school children displaying their project on fair trade with many of the children taking part in the Community Council bookmark competition to promote the subject. In Balermo, we have the Parish Church and St Mungo's Church being recognised as fair trade churches. The three schools in the village, Dean Park Primary, Harmony and Balermo High, are fair trade schools, as is a number of retailers, including Scotmid, who was the first Scottish retailer to stock fair trade products. The Balerno Fair Trade Group have for a number of years organised an annual craft and coffee morning, with this year's event taking place this Saturday in St Joseph's and the Augston Hall. In previous years, the craft stalls have included wall hangings from Africa, jewellery from Colombia, rice from Malawi, bags from Nepal and embroidery from Palestine. However, my own personal favourite is the opportunity to taste fair trade wine. The hard work of all the organisations in Balermo in promoting fair trade in the community 
resulted in Balerno being recognised as a fair trade village in 2013 by the Fair Trade Foundation. But why is promoting fair trade important? In developing countries, independent small farmers working their own land and marketing their produce through a local cooperative are paid a price that covers the cost of sustainable production and are also paid a premium that producers can invest in development. By being able to exceed their cost of production allows them to improve their lives through more nutritious food, better education and access to health care. Then there are the fair trade producers. For example, most fair trade tea is grown in estates and the primary concern is for workers employed on tea plant plantations for fair wages and decent working conditions. If producers agree to pay decent wages, guarantee the right to join trade unions and provide good housing where relevant, also have health and safety as well as environmental standards and where no child or forced labour can occur, then in return they will be awarded contracts that allow for long-term planning and sustainable production practices where they can receive partial advice, advance payments when requested. As a result, fair trade benefits workers and communities by spreading profits more equitably and stimulating the local economy. Profits are often reinvested into community projects such as health clinics, childcare and education. All of us can help the fair trade movement not only by supporting local organisations during fair trade fortnight, but by stimulating demand by asking for fair trade products in shops, cafes and restaurants. We can also spread the fair trade message amongst our family, friends and colleagues, as well as a result in assisting in small way in supporting communities in developed countries. Presiding officer, Edinburgh is a fair trade city and Scotland has been recognised as one of the first fair trade nations, highlighting that we, the people of Scotland, share a vision of being a good global citizen and being committed to playing our part in addressing poverty. Many thanks. <clears throat> I now call Annabel Goldie to be followed by David Torrance. Deputy Presiding Officer, I am delighted to be able to speak in this debate and I too thank George Adam for putting down this motion. Fair trade is unusual in that it works both in theory and in practice. It pledges fair prices for producers in developing countries and it gives power back to both producers and consumers. Many of the farmers and workers supplying necessities like food and clothing, things we take for granted, are often themselves left without these self-same necessities. When these producers, the farmers and workers, repeatedly work for poor wages, when they can be badly treated, when workers can be fired for daring to complain, fair trade offers vital protection and support. Indeed, some producers have said that it would be impossible to continue farming without fair trade. So fair trade is what it says on the tin. It is about making trade fair, ensuring decent wages and working conditions for producers and uh, workers. And that is a win-win situation for producers and workers. All of that means that they can control their futures and lead a life with the dignity and respect to which everyone is entitled. And consumers have a vital role to play. Fair trade consumers have the power to change and influence communities around the world every day. And I'm delighted that our own Parliament shop is stocking some fair trade products. I have here a bar of Scottish Parliament fair trade chocolate, which Deputy Presiding Officer, to save me from myself, I shall donate to Mr Adam in a gesture of fair trade solidarity. But how many of us know where the fair trade products in our stores are and do we always remember to buy them? I could do a lot better and I suspect I am not alone. I thought George Adam had some very interesting suggestions for expanding awareness of fair trade through sport and involving young people. And young people are so important in this. And I'm delighted that in the gallery we've got some pupils from St. Patrick's Primary in Cote Bridge. And it's lovely to have them here. And I hope they're enjoying the debate and finding this interesting. In my own area, Renfrewshire achieved fair trade zone status in February 2009 after a campaign led by the Renfrewshire Council, by local fair trade groups, by schools, churches and businesses. 
And Renfrewshire also has a fair trade steering group set up to increase awareness of fair trade across Renfrewshire. And Rainbow Turtle is an important retailer of fair trade products. But even before all of that, Deputy Presiding Officer, in May 2007, my home village of Bishopton was the first village in Renfrewshire to be awarded fair trade village status. And I think not even Mr Adam can try and eclipse that in terms of uh, a local achievement. But that achievement recognises the hard work and commitment of local people to do what they can to help. And now, uh, Paisley, Renfrew, Johnston, Lochwinnock and Kilbarkin, all in Renfrewshire, have achieved fair trade status. And I think that's a very uh, useful indicator and a very useful encouragement to other communities as to what can be achieved when the will is there and the desire to support this um, tremendous initiative. As Patricia Ferguson and others have said, in February 2013, Scotland became a fair trade nation. Deputy Presiding Officer... As we are all consumers, everyone can do something to support fair trade. And Fair Trade Fortnight is an ideal opportunity to show our support to the producers and workers around the world. We can all play a part and we can get involved in Fair Trade Fortnight by buying or consuming fair trade products. Safe in the knowledge that every fair trade product purchased goes towards helping farmers and workers in some of the poorest parts of the world, giving real support, real encouragement and real guidance and help for a more positive and sustainable future. Many thanks. And I now call David Torrens to be followed by James Kelly. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to thank George Adam for bringing this motion to Parliament and for hosting the Fair Trade Reception last night. I welcome this opportunity to speak about Fair Trade and the Fair Trade Fortnight 2015. Celebrating Scotland's second anniversary of a Fair Trade Nation, I want to highlight some of the work that has been done in Scotland and in my constituency of Kirkcaldy. In promoting Fair Trade and encouraging public bodies, business families and individuals to purchase their Fair Trade products. According to the World Trade Organisation, world trade has grown by a yearly average of 5.3% over the past 20 years. Flourishing global trade has also led to an increase in merchandise being imported from developing countries, such as bananas, sugar, coffee and cocoa. Today we consume these items on a daily basis. However, as a responsible citizen and consumer, we need to ask what we, where these products come from, who produced them, and under what conditions. By fostering a relationship between the consumer in the developed world and the producers in developing countries, Fair Trade aims to spread this message. The Fair Trade mark indicates that a product includes ingredients which are produced by mostly small-scale farmer organisations. They must also apply Fair Trade social, economic and environmental standards set out by the Fair Trade Labelling Organisation International. Compliance with these regulations is checked on a regular basis. What is the standard of such a great importance? They ensure that farmers are paid enough to sustain a living for them and their families. In regions such as many African countries, smallholder food producers are the backbone of the agriculture sector, growing 70% of all produce. Thus securing a decent livelihood for them is essential. Apart from income stability, fair trade promotes workers' rights, environmental sustainability and demographic governance amongst cooperatives. As was mentioned by George Adam, the Scottish Fair Trade Forum engages with the public in our country on the issue of fair trade. Established in 2007 by campaigners, Scotland-based non-government organisation and the Scottish Government, the Scottish Fair Trade Forum campaign has been a great success. Fair trade town groups in Scotland are continuously growing. From shoppers across Scotland to a school child who wears a fair trade cotton uniform and many of the fair trade town groups, I believe that their work has made an incredible impact. <clears throat> Before concluding, I also want to highlight some fair trade initiatives in my constituency of Kirkcaldy. One of our local high schools, St Andrews RC Kirkcaldy High School, has established a fair trade committee. Speaking out against unethical clothing, the pupils decided to launch a fair trade cotton hoodies project. Believing that they have the ability to make a change, young people from St Andrews High School sourced hoodies from Eponia Clothing, a company that has helped over 4,000 farmers guarantee a fair and adequate price for their cotton. For students' in eagerness to engage with the fair trade ethos is truly inspiring, forging a more informed generation of consumers. 
Greener Kirkcaldy, a local community organisation in my area, has also been extremely active in promoting fair trade. In the Rico shop located in Kirkcaldy High Street Hub, Greener Kirkcaldy sells fair trade samples, including tea, coffee, sugar and chocolate, along with other fair trade products. Celebrating this year's fair trade fortnight, Greener Kirkcaldy is offering refreshments to curious consumers who would like to try some of the fair trade products. In conjunction, they are providing information and trying to convince other local businesses and organisations to switch to fair trade. From tomorrow, they are also organising a free screening of the film Fair Trade Matters in their High Street hub. Whilst the examples mentioned show how far we have come as a fair trade nation, a lot still needs to be done. Recognising that only 1% of cotton produced in the UK carry a fair trade mark, and the ongoing price wars have seen a 40% decrease in UK retail banana prices. Further awareness needs to be created, paying for the full value of these products and further enhancing working conditions need to remain a priority. Lastly, despite these challenges, I am certain that Scotland will continue to be a leading advocate in the Fair Trade campaign and educate purchasers across the country to make simple changes by buying fair trade produce. Many thanks. And finally, in the open debate, James Kelly. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to participate in uh, this afternoon's members' debate. And I'd like to congratulate George Adam, my co uh, convener of the Cross Party Group on Fair Trade, in bringing the debate uh, to the Chamber. I think there can be no doubt that if the, the test or the measure of uh, what you're seeking to achieve in life, as in politics, is making a difference, then fair trade is something that can be demonstrated as, uh, as a real, some, something that's a real tangible success. If you look at the impact of fair trade, whether you're a farmer, a producer or a worker in the countries that, uh, that produce fair trade products, it has made a real difference and it has really grown uh, since the concept uh, took off. I suppose the test for us here in, in Scotland is examining the difference that we have made in encouraging that trade to, the, to those countries. Uh, I think the driver for a lot of that success has been the Scottish Fair Trade Forum, uh, which was an, initiated in January 2007. And I think you know, tribute uh, goes to those involved in that, uh, those initial discussions, including my colleague Patricia Ferguson. Um, if you look just now at the work that the director, Martin Rhodes, uh, carries out in terms of educating uh, people on fair trade and also launching successful campaigns, uh, they really have made a difference. And part of that has been working really closely uh, with the cross-party group in the parliament uh, that you know, George Adam has mentioned. Both George Adam and Patricia Ferguson mentioned the Ball of Football campaign which was the focus of a recent discussion at the cross-party group in fair trade. And hopefully those discussions have helped raise the profile of that campaign. Uh, and Patricia Ferguson gave a practical example of that uh, in the, the way that that's been marketed and supported within Glasgow City Council. But we've also, we've also had a number of challenging discussions at the, the fair trade, uh, the cross-party group in fair trade, um, uh, David Torrance had mentioned uh, trademarks, and that's actually a big issue uh, in terms of getting trademarks established and accrediting people to use the trademarks. And I remember one very interesting discussion at the, at the, the cross-party group where we were challenged as to whether this was all being handled properly. Um, I suppose the test in, in Scotland, as Annabel Goldie said, you know, how, how can we make a difference? How can we make a difference in our own local areas? And like others, I want to pay tribute to those who have made a real difference in local communities. In Rutherglen and Cambus Lang, I'm delighted to say they've been accredited uh, with fair trade status. And that goes down to the work of the, the local fair trade group and the, the local churches and schools that participate in that. I particularly want to highlight the work of Stonewall High School, one of the most successful fair trade groups in the country, which started off with a £100 grant, but has raised over £180,000 uh, for fair trade, for fair traded uh, products. Uh, and that tribute to that goes to Isabel Gilchrist, the teacher uh, who's been with the group since the start. And the group recently has been recognised twice in the last year uh, with getting community awards 
uh, and also awards at a, a national level. And that makes, you know, that shows the, the difference that are pr promoting that at a local level, uh, selling that £185,000 worth of fair traded goods, the, the work that local people are doing and how that links in to helping the, the farmers, the producers and the workers uh, of the counties that are, are participating in the schemes. So in summing up, Deputy Presiding Officer, congratulate George Adam again in bringing the motion to the Chamber uh, and also give great credit to all the local groups, not only in my constituency, but throughout Scotland, who work tirelessly on behalf of fair trade. Many thanks. And can I now invite Fergus Ewing to respond to the debate minister. Seven minutes or so, please. Presiding officer, thank you very much. And I congratulate George Adam on bringing forward this motion today, as he did indeed do so before on this topic, I believe, a year ago. And also for the work that he and his uh, colleagues do on the cross-party group on fair trade, to which uh, James Kelly has quite rightly alluded, uh, and which plays a major part in this parliament's uh, proceedings. Mr. Adam is therefore to be congratulated in his work on this issue, as are all other members who are taking it forward. He is also, of course, a, a denizen of Paisley and an enthusiastic supporter of all matters relating to Paisley, uh, not, uh, of course, including its football team. And I was slightly surprised to notice that it took him as long as 1 minute 24 seconds before alluding to St. Mirren. Uh, and, uh, I, I'm sure that he will be uh, cheered by the fact that he will next be able to consume, courtesy of Miss Goldie, the gift of a bar of chocolate when he is supporting them on the terraces at their next outing. Presiding officer, on the 25th of February 2013, the Minister for Europe and International Development announced that Scotland had achieved fair trade nation status. This followed the report can Scotland call itself a fair trade nation, which was submitted by the Scottish Fair Trade Forum and considered by an independent panel of experts. The forum had been awarded a total of uh, £787,000 since 2007 from the Scottish Government to take forward the campaign, with a further 442000 up to and including 2017, in, in order to build support for fair trade across all sections of Scottish society. So we were prompted to action by the Fair Trade Forum, quite rightly. And I think uh, as a government, as a parliament, we, we have responded to that call. And the question, I think, should be asked, what does fair trade nation status actually mean for Scotland? And being awarded this status demonstrates our commitment to playing our part in making a real difference to some of the world's most vulnerable people, as various members have quite rightly described. So I think that the people of Scotland have shown in supporting the fair trade campaign that we are a caring nation determined to do what we can to, to see that uh, workers are in the developing world are paid a fair price for their goods so they can shape their futures and those of their families uh, for the better. Many members have uh, referred to the local achievement of, uh, of status of a fair trade town and over the last 12 months I'm advised that this has been achieved by Kiri Muir, Stonehaven, Wishaw, Aberlour, Bears Den, Mulgai, Elgin, Uddingston, Fault House, and my apologies to any that I have inadvertently omitted. Um, I think this is uh, therefore a cause which has gained traction across the whole country and indeed uh, most uh, communities positively engaging with that. And indeed also references have been made, presiding officer, to a school from your own constituency, St. Patrick's, who quite rightly chose to leave before this part of the proceedings. Uh, but there have been around 200 schools that have participated, and I think this is really perhaps the crux of matters so far as I can see in possession of a six-year-old child that, that children are uh, instinctively keen on learning more about the world than those who are less fortunate than ourselves. And therefore, the work that is done in schools by their teachers with the support of their parents is to be commended and is perhaps the most important thing of all. Uh, but also the work of the churches too should be uh, recognised. And I think it's important to say that over the last eight years, awareness of fair trade has grown amongst people in Scotland to 87% in 2013. And where 87% of people are aware of something, that's a very, very high level of awareness. So I think that that's proof positive that that uh, this is not just a paper theoretical cause. It's something that 
that has ignited a spark of interest based on a sense of decency throughout the country. Um, we, we have, to respond to Patricia Ferguson's point about the Malawi floods, provided some funding, £150,000, for the Malawi floods response. Um, we, uh, I understand that Mr Yusuf, to respond to Mr Adams' rather prolonged reference to footballs uh, during his speech, uh, uh, we have uh, met with, Mr Yusuf has met with Bala, and we understand that 100 fair trade rugby balls have been purchased for Bala for the Milan Expo event on the 27th of March. Um, so uh, that, that is, is positive. Lots of specific events and constituencies have been referred to quite rightly uh, in this debate by a number of members participating. And in my own constituency, the Inverness Fair Trade Group has been working extremely hard during Fair Trade Fortnight to promote fair trade in our area, organising and supporting events, including coffee mornings uh, and other activities. So, um, presiding officer, in closing, perhaps I could just say that, that, of course, what we do yesterday has been good, but it's really what we do tomorrow that counts. And I think the fact that there has been such a, a, an excellent support across the chamber for this cause demonstrates that it is in good hands. It is not a cause that is being neglected, but one that is being taken up actively by us all, irrespective of our viewpoints on matters. Uh, we all agree that the cause of fair trade uh, is one that we can all support, unite in, and use the powers, the resources, the opportunities that we have in Scotland to try, indeed, to make the world a fairer place. Many thanks, Minister. That concludes George Adams' debate on Fair Trade Fortnight 2015, and I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30 p.m. <laughs>